Today we'll be making a useful chemical precursor which was also used as a pain medicine. On top of that, it'll also be the very first crystals on this channel. This synthesis is going to be rather simple. We'll be making acetanolide from aniline. This compound has a few interesting applications. For one, its structure is very similar to a well-known pain medication, paracetamol. The only difference is this hydroxide group in the para position. And in fact, acetanolide is metabolized into paracetamol in your body, which makes it a prodrug. It also has a pain-relieving and antipyretic effect just like paracetamol, but unfortunately it is also metabolized into aniline which is quite toxic and causes unwanted side effects. It is therefore not used as a drug anymore and has been replaced by the much safer paracetamol. In chemistry this compound is interesting if you want to do aniline chemistry without risking to modify the amine functional group. For example, if you wanted to do an electrophilic aromatic substitution of some kind, the amine is much more reactive than the benzene ring and would lead to unwanted side products. This means very low yield and since that's the only important measurement of chemistry skill, we would like to avoid that. Therefore, the amine must be protected. In most cases this can be done with an acetyl group as it's very easy to install and remove and it's also very cheap. This is exactly what we'll be doing. The acetylation agent we will use is acetic anhydride. Depending on where you live, this compound may be difficult to acquire because of other uses and acetyl chloride or glacial acetic acid may also be used. But you either have to deal with HCl gas or shitty yields. Now let's quickly go over the mechanism. Acetic anhydride has a very electrophilic carbonyl carbon and when protonated by an acid, this nucleophilicity gets even stronger. Aniline will then attack this carbon and an acetate ion is kicked off. The acetate is then protonated which forms acetic acid as the only byproduct and since acetic acid is also the solvent for this reaction, this approach is very clean and easy to execute. Three chemicals are needed for this preparation. Aniline, acetic anhydride and glacial acetic acid. The aniline has again oxidized during storage and took on this dark red color. This isn't that big of a deal for this kind of reaction and I could just use it like this, but I need it for another project as well, so I'm just gonna do a quick vacuum distillation. After that's done, we can start with the preparation of acetanolide. 53.6 grams of acetic anhydride are weighed out in a 250 milliliter round bottom flask and mixed with 55 milliliters of glacial acetic acid. Then a reflux condenser is placed on the flask and 45.6 grams of the freshly distilled aniline are very slowly added with stirring. This process is very exothermic. For one, the aniline is converted into its salt form as its weak base and on top of that the reaction is also starting. You can see me feeling the temperature of the flask to get an idea of how hot it's getting and I thought I could get away without cooling in this part but the acetic acid starts boiling just before I could add all of the aniline so I guess I underestimated this a little bit. It's not a big deal though, I quickly stop the flask so I don't stink up my whole room with acetic acid and I cool the mixture with a water bath. After a few minutes, this has cooled down enough that I can add the rest of the aniline. Yes, I could have used an addition funnel here to add the aniline slowly and that would have prevented the boiling issue, but then I would have had to clean that and I am lazy. Besides, it's not really a big deal that it got hot because I'm going to reflux this anyways. I rinsed the aniline beaker with some more acetic acid and I then put an oil bath below the flask. The mixture is now refluxed for one hour to push the reaction to completion. After the reflux, I prepare TLC to check the reaction progress. 
As you can see, all of the adeline has been consumed, so we can now isolate the product. To precipitate the compound, the reaction mix is poured into a beaker containing 500 milliliters of water. Because acetanilide is very insoluble in water, it immediately crashes out. The crystals are now filtered and washed with some more water. The crude product still has a brown color in it, so to purify it further, I will recrystallize it. Initially I thought that I could recrystallize from water only, so I started with about 300 ml of water and heated the mixture to a boil. The acetanilide started liquefying at some point, which had me concerned that I somehow screwed up and hydrolyzed all of my product, but I took it off the hot plate and let it cool, and everything solidified again. After reheating everything, this also didn't happen again. But the product didn't dissolve, so I added a bit more water. And it still didn't dissolve, so I added more water, and more water, and more water, and then I ran out of space in my one liter beaker, so I poured everything to a bigger one, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to dissolve this in only water. So I switched to adding ethanol to the beaker. And after only 100 milliliters, everything finally started dissolving. So next time I recrystallize acid and light, I'm gonna use an ethanol water mixture from the start. Now that everything is dissolved, I turn off the hot plate and cover the beaker with some plastic wrap and I let everything cool overnight. After leaving the beaker in the fridge for another day, everything should have crystallized and the solution can again be filtered. The crystals are now completely white and fluffy, but they are still wet, so to fully dry them, I put them in my big boy vacuum desiccator. And the next morning, the crystals are completely dry. The recovered product has a mass of 52.42 grams, which corresponds to a 77.56% yield. I must say that's not exactly great. Usually it should be above 90%. Isn't that something I complain about in every video? Anyway, there's still a whole liter of mother liquor standing around and I am very suspicious that there are a few percent of yields still hiding in there. So to force them out, I first saturate the solution with a whole bunch of salt. Already there's a lot of product precipitating. But don't be fooled by looks, because you'll be very disappointed by the actual amount that is. Then I extract all of this with some DCM in my big separatory funnel, and I remove the solvent via distillation. Then to get rid of the last bits of solvent, I pull a strong vacuum, and... Nice. It's very brown, because all of the impurities got extracted as well, but I'll just recrystallize this again. This time I learned from my mistakes and I will use an ethanol water mix. Yes, I am capable of learning. Amazing, right? Well, you already know how this goes, so hear the music. So, we actually got a decent amount of additional product for all that work. This is 6.46 grams of acetanilide, which brings our total yield up to 87.12%. Now that's what I'm talking about. There is this brown gunk in there, which probably comes from me overheating the crude compound with the heat gun while removing the DCM, but it's not very much, so we can just ignore it. I won't combine this with the main batch though, and instead just process it immediately. 
I'm not sure when and if there will be a video about this preparation, but I will do my best because it's a very interesting procedure. There's also one more thing before you go. As you may know, chemistry isn't exactly cheap. So if you enjoy my content and you would like to support me a little, I have made a Patreon account which you can reach via this link right here. As a Patreon, you will get early access to my videos and also some updates of everything else that I do in between. Of course, all major content will still be available for free on YouTube, even if you don't subscribe, so don't worry about missing out on anything. In the next video, we will also continue with the QN synthesis, and believe me, it's gonna be good. Until then, I wish you all a pleasant day and stay tuned.